welcome to this lecture. Today, we are going to deal with these topics little quickly but in detailed approach. My name is Gunjan Subedi and as always, I will be guiding you in this topic with practical explanation and examples when necessary. Before starting, let me kindly remind you to subscribe to My Lean University, which is my initiative to deliver free and quality professional education to your screen. Before moving in the steps of capacity planning and learning how to do capacity planning with examples, we need to know what exactly is capacity planning. Capacity planning is the process of determining the production capacity needed by an organization to meet the changing demands for its products. So capacity planning helps us to meet the production capacity even when there is a change in demand. This though looks a production or manufacturing related definition, we can implement the same idea to determine the capacity of materials or service hours in other business too, when there is change in demand of service or materials. So what does capacity planning involve? It involves forecasting future demand for the product or service and determining the necessary resources required to meet the demand. Capacity planning helps an organization ensure that it has the necessary resources in place to meet customers' demand and avoid over or under utilization of those resources. After this, let's come to the main agenda of the video, how to perform capacity planning. I will guide you with some steps with relevant examples of how this is done in different business. I will give you example of each step so that you know exactly what I am meaning to explain in each step. First step, step number one, identify business need for capacity planning. Before starting the capacity planning process, it is important to understand the business and need for it. This can include factors such as expected growth in demand for products or services, changes in business operations or processes, or need to upgrade or replace outdated equipment. For example, a manufacturing company may identify the need for capacity planning due to an increase in order from the new customer or a service-based company may need to plan for capacity due to an increase in the number of clients they serve. Second step, gather data and analyze the current capacity. The next step in the capacity planning process is to gather data and analyze the current capacity of the business. This can include the information on production output, inventory levels, and the capacity of the equipment and other resources. For example, a manufacturing company may gather data on number of units produced per shift, the average time it takes to complete a unit, and the capacity of the machinery being used. A service-based company may gather data and the number of clients served per day, the average time it takes to complete a service and the capacity of the team providing the service. Step number three is to forecast future demand. When the current capacity of the business has been analyzed, the next step is to forecast future demand for products or services. This can be done using variety of methods such as market research, customer survey and sales projection. For example, a manufacturing company may use market research to predict future demand for their products while a service-based company may use customer service to understand the expected demand for their services. Step number four is to determine the capacity requirements. With the forecasted demand and the current capacity in hand, the next step is to determine the capacity requirements for the business. This can be done by comparing the forecasted demand to the current capacity and identifying any gaps or shortages. For example, if a manufacturing company forecasts that they will need to produce 50 units per day, but their current capacity is only 40 units per day, they will need to increase their capacity by 10 units per day to meet the demand. The fifth stage is to develop capacity options. With the capacity requirements identified, the next step is to develop options for meeting those requirements. This can include options such as increasing production output, improving efficiency, adding new equipment or resources, or outsourcing certain tasks. For example, a manufacturing company may consider options such as increasing the number of ships, investing in new machinery, or outsourcing certain tasks to third party. A service-based company may consider options such as hiring additional staff, improving efficiency through process improvements, or outsourcing certain tasks. 
The sixth step is to evaluate capacity options. When the capacity options have been identified, the next step is to evaluate each option to determine which ones are most feasible and cost effective. This can involve evaluating factors such as upfront costs, ongoing expenses, and potential impact on the business. For example, a manufacturing company may evaluate the cost and benefit of increasing the number of chips versus investing in new machinery. A service-based company may evaluate the cost and benefits of hiring additional staff versus outsourcing certain tasks. Finally, in step number seven, we implement capacity plan. Once the most feasible and cost-effective capacity options have been identified, the next step is to implement the chosen capacity plan. This can involve putting the necessary processes and resources in place to meet the increased capacity requirements. For example, a manufacturing company may need to hire additional staff, invest in new machinery, or make changes to production process to meet the increased capacity requirements. A service-based company may need to hire additional staff and make changes to the service processes. Before ending this lecture, let me remind you to join my Lean University's premium membership and enjoy a total free access for a limited time inside my Lean University's online library and get tons of free courses, free books, and lecture topics on project management, Lean and Six Sigma, operations and supply chain, productive and preventive maintenance, quality maintenance, data science, industry and sales management, Agile and Scrum, Kaizen or continuous improvement, and much more totally free. No strings attached. As we have limited seats, only the early subscribers will be given open access inside the premium membership. And remember, it's totally free. Please subscribe and share the video if you share the common belief that professional education should be accessible to all.